and I like to point out an eight force wind girl was running the report is asking me how on earth does that keep still and I am explaining to him that those, those white sections can we put the flash on the low part they're the sections of the body that's been open what we're doing we're using the girl force eight as one field and we're using the lack of field on the craft as the opposite and we've reversed this to the back side of the wind so we're holding it dead still and we held it for an hour to show them it won't move until we change the conditions of the craft what year was that? that's about uh, 1968 this again is uh, about 69 where the BBC wanted us to do a, a demonstration and this is what they did they had two helicopters they had cameras made in Germany especially to go out on a boom they paid 80 pounds an hour for, for each pilot and they believed and I did tell them they were wrong but they said they were right that they would capture that craft taking off across the country to the final marker that they were setting up for the test and that would be time check the cameras were all in place and they say well John we're ready you're sure? yes alright so I gave the command for the engine to speed up and she took off I didn't put no support weight at the top and boy it went and within three seconds we got the call from the RAF radar to say that it is at the height for the test run so I swung it round and sent it off to Cornwall they missed it too at Cornwall we were notified that it had crossed the point we returned it back to Mortimer the time rested all the money they spent was a sheer waste of time we were lucky two or three camera people did catch it from the ground but as you can see there is a large electric pylon in the background the speed of this compressing the air distorted completely the background pylon we're not sure whether it actually rained from that compression it probably is but we, were, we couldn't get near enough to check we were all too busy now you may wonder what was the record time the record time was that between Mortimer and the edge the end landmark of Cornwall it took three minutes to get there hmm? well uh, I would say we're looking at about a hundred odd miles and that was a model being withheld from the maximum speed it wasn't touching anything we were only just satisfying the media what it could do and that was only a model. Did it make a sonic boom? Did it make a sonic boom? No, no. Because it, it's, forced, it's forced a tunnel. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be explaining this a little later. Here is somebody caught this picture. They shouldn't have got it, but here's the transmitting equipment. Away in the distance we are bringing the craft towards us now I'd like to, I think many of you would be very interested in what you see in a disc shape if you're shown a photo of a disc if it's completely circle the person taking it is looking straight up no other point will give you a circle picture we know we have thousands of photographs if they say that they were standing so far away then that picture is a fake if you see an elliptical shape picture and they say they were underneath it that's a fake so for elliptical shape you have to be some distance away and you're taking it at an angle if you see a diamond shape then that particular shape is coming right sort of diagonally towards you and it's the way the centre diamond look 
tells you which diagonal route it was taking to the person taking the picture. If you see it's a long strip, then it is shooting past you. It is going parallel to you. Simple little pictures tell me a lot because we have put crafts to the test to find out how they look in a photograph. Now, this particular picture is taken from another craft. We have taken up because a lot of the people at the show wanted to know what it looks like from above. So we've taken the craft up and taken a shot. We also have taken the craft down and taken a shot from underneath. Is that on the next shot? Now, underneath is completely black. Now, that's because of the way it, they have taken it. There are points where you take it where you can see the mirror image of the ground condition, whether it's trees, or whether it's big lumps of ground, it will colour it. It acts like a mirror. When you see it with nothing mirror on it, it means that the person was standing at such an angle that you can't see the mirror image being projected by the bottom of the craft. Here's another view taken by the second craft from the top because we took two or three at different points so that people can see it still remains that particular condition. And the best, we took them in the evening so you can see it. That's another shot taken from underneath. Again, the person taking it is obviously uh, at a diagonal to it so you cannot see the mirror image of it. This is Schiphol. The airport I did my international flying in when I took passengers to add weight to the aircraft. And as you see, we are projecting the 21st century. Schiphol is actually developing a new section to the airport. And uh, I think you will realise that the 21st century is going to look quite different to what we know. John Thomas and his son has produced an image of uh, the disc in space. Uh, these pictures are in the books trying to give you the idea, the image of the craft so you get used to the picture so when you see one next time in the sky you'll know who it is and who to blame. <laughs> Here's John illustration of what we think will be the, the pole shift in the year 2000 which of course we hope we got the disc to get out of the way until it settled down anyone want to book a seat to get out of the way give John your name we'll book your seat I'm on the, fr on the first on <laughs> right now we're, that's the end of the size right. right I try hard not to make technical things hard I know, I have to attend lectures and you can fall to sleep very quick. I don't like you paying to come to sleep when I'm talking. You can go home and have it free. <laughs> when you come here, I want to try to capture your mind into the interest of new technology. I want you to think and look and see when we demonstrate, we want those who are interested, not the people who cannot be bothered to come to find out what's going on. We want you, you who do take interest in technology, we want you to keep in touch because we want you to see what we're doing and it's only a short time away when we'll be up and running. I have told this organisation that one hour is useless. After all, I've been lecturing three weeks in Denmark. 